everybody. We're back with CBS News' John Dickerson. Today, you tweeted this out. You said, there's a lot of bait today. You are not a shark. You don't have to take it. What did you mean by that? I won't talk about the specific thing that caused that, because then I'd be giving energy to the bait. Sure. But in politics, we've seen this for a long time in politics, but it happens all the time now. If I'm a supporter of President Trump's, and I don't want to talk about the fact that all the Republican leaders a year ago were saying he incited an act of terrorism. I don't want to talk about that today. So I'll say something that's incredibly incendiary or something that's just flat out wrong mm -hmm. to steal attention. And what will happen is, on social media and even in some members of the press, they'll fact check what I'm saying and we'll spend all this time over here talking about the bait that I threw out instead of focusing on what the day should be about, which is, did the contributory things that led to January 6th, are they still with us? Uh, what's going to happen if they still are? And what does that mean for our democracy? Well, let's get into that a little bit. Because... It became clear to a lot of people, um, and even people who denied that it was clear to them, if you know what I mean, it became clear to a lot of people shortly after the president went out, uh, the former president went out into the White House press room, I believe on the 5th of November, and said, they're stealing it, this is, this is all a lie and everything. This is even b was before the Electoral College uh, was called uh, for Biden. And it was still, again, still in November. You said on November 9th, shortly thereafter, you said that if the former president continued to lie about the election results and the Republicans allowed him to do so, I believe was the other condition yeah. in there, without repudiating it, that they'd be, quote, burning the Democratic furniture, small d. Where are we now? In the last year, how singed is the furniture? Or is it a total loss and we need to go to Ikea and buy an elk dorp? <laughs> Well, you know, when I said that, my, my wife, Ann, was kind of like, what are you talking about? And what I was trying to say with the Democratic furniture, this, of course, long before January 6th, is I, there, was a, there was energy in the air that was very bad. A president's obligation is to, it's a, it's a job of trust. You can't go saying things where you don't have any proof. And you really can't go saying anything about the central question of American democracy, which is the peaceful transfer of power. And as you've said to me many times, uh, that... Uh, was it Roosevelt who said it? Essentially a moral office. Right. So he's breaking that job. The other part of the presidency is you don't inflame. You actually tamp things down if you can. So he was inflaming and he was breaking his trust obligation to the job. And once you do that, you put negative energy into the system. And somebody has to stand up and say, this is wrong, it's not true. Because they know, Republicans know the power he has over the base of the party and that they will believe him. Mm -hmm. In part because for four years he has changed the very nature of truth. So... I just felt like this awful, some awful thing was going to happen. And so I chose that weird metaphor. Well, it turns out furniture was broken and busted, and in fact, in reality and, in, and, and, uh, and symbolically. Um, where are we now? I mean, if you look at the effort to kind of forget January 6th from the president's supporters, to turn it even into a martyr's day rather than mm -hmm. a criminal act of terrorism, which is what Republicans called it at the time. And for some Americans, a successful attempt because 71% of Republicans still believe as in polls that Biden wasn't properly elected. And that day, a large per, uh, percentage of Republicans believe that that day was actually uh, an FBI false flag or Antifa or something like that. And if you get people to believe that, they say, well, wait a minute, why aren't you doing anything about this? Uh, and so since you're not doing anything, we're going to go our own way and do something violent because this can't be allowed to stand. And that's not... Uh, and one thing I so the lie about the violence leads possibly to more violence. That would be the next bit of furniture to burn. It feels like the, the same thing. If you don't stand up and say this is a lie and don't believe this and you're being misled, then you leave people to their own devices. And there's something that's been said today often, which is, well, the system worked. You know, the system held. Well, it did. But when you use a defibrillator on somebody who has a heart attack, you don't then just say, well, everything's fine. You can go back to smoking and eating four cheeseburgers a day. When the defibrillator works, you go, wait a minute, something here with the patient has to be dealt with. And so, sure, the defibrillator worked. The, the, the attempt to overthrow a free and fair election didn't happen. But that doesn't mean that the system is healthy. We have to take another break, but uh, stick around. When we come back, I'll ask John how history might remember Mike Pence. I almost forgot his name. <laughs>